Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering question number three from this um, M1 paper of June 2019, um, the GCE syllabus. It says, at time t equals zero, a toy rocket is fired ver vertically upwards from rest from a point A on the ground. The ro rocket moves with constant acceleration, 2.8 meters per second squared. At time t equals 5.25 seconds, the rocket runs out of fuel and then moves vertically upwards under gravity. At time t equals capital T seconds, the rocket reaches its greatest height above A. The rocket is modeled as a particle. Find the value of t. All right, so you have a situation here where you've got the ground and you've got the rocket which is fired up. So the rocket has two stages. The first stage is, this is where time equals zero, when time equals uh, 5.25 seconds between those two times it's moving upwards okay it's moving upwards and it has a different um, acceleration from the second part so in the first part up from here to there the acceleration is upwards and it's 2.8 meters per second squared that's the acceleration that's moving up in the second stage of its journey, it's going to reach, uh, you know, the highest point of its journey. Okay, and the highest point of the journey, that means basically what happens, it, it's got acceleration like this, it's going upwards, and it's accelerating this whole time. It's accelerating this whole time. Okay, now when it runs out of fuel, what happens is, it's going to have uh, no thrust taking it up, and the only force acting on it will be gravity, which will be acting downwards which is going to be g downwards all right it's going to be negative g when we put it in because it's down and well i'm going to take up as positive i'm going to take up as positive why because its initial movement was upwards but the second part of the journey there's a different acceleration from the first so you have to treat them separately okay so for the first part of the journey okay we want to find out the the total distances traveled i need to find the distances traveled for for part one i've got to take it different different values for s for zuva zuva we're well, going to use zuva why because it's a constant acceleration so we need to find um s and that will give us let's call this let's call this uh height one okay height one u is zero because it's fired from rest the initial velocity was zero the final velocity is we don't know what it is we'll call it v1 that's, that's where it reaches that point there. The acceleration is 2.8 meters per second squared, and it's upwards, it's positive, because we've taken it up as positive, and the time is 5.25 seconds. All right, so we have to find the value of t, actually. You have to find the value of t. You don't have to find what s is. You have to find the value of t. So this is, um, okay, so that's fine. So the, for the first part, we know what it is, but however, we need it for the second part. So I need some information from here to help us find um in the solution to part two and one of the things i need to know is v1 because v1 is the same as uh, u2 the initial velocity of two is the same as the final velocity of 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 one so when it reaches this particular height all right um got to that velocity and then it runs out of fuel it's in a new situation so the the final velocity up here is equal to the initial velocity of the new situation so we need to find what that v1 is, that the velocity uh, when it reaches this point. So we can use v equals u plus at. Okay, that's probably the simplest way to do it. So that's going to be u, which is 0, plus a, which is 2.8, times 5.25. So that's going to give us the velocity at the point where it runs out of fuel. Okay, so let's take that. You've got 2.8 multiplied by 5.25. So that's... Uh, 14.7 meters per second so that's where it reaches at this point 14.7 meters per second and when it gets to the top of its flight its velocity is going to be zero meters per second at the top of its flight because it's going to come to instantaneous rest now the only thing that's ha happening is not being thrust now anymore so now it's just moving upwards but it's going to start decelerating because now the only force acting on it is the gravity Okay, so now we've got to find, um, use, we know that the acceleration now is acting downwards. So in, in part two, um, again, we can use SUVAT, but now for the second leg of its journey, where the acceleration has now changed to negative g. Um, this is s, this is h2, which I don't think we have to find. 
u is now 14.7 and v is 0 and t is what we have to find but it's not capital T let me call this t2 okay we know that t1 is 5.25 and let's call this um, this from here to there is t2 okay this is t2 is the time from there to there okay now so we need to find what t2 is um, again we can use v equals u plus a t we know v is zero we know u is 14.7 we know g is minus 9.8 and we know t is t2 so if i rearrange this i have 9.8 times t2 is equal to 14.7 so t2 is 14.7 divided by 9.8 so t2 is equal to 14 point oops 14 point 7 over 9.8 which gives us 3 over 2 which is 1.5 seconds so we can say therefore that t is t1 plus t2 which is I mean we already told t1 that's 5.25 seconds okay that's where it ran out of fuel plus 1.5 seconds that's going to give me um, 6.75 seconds 6.75 seconds okay there's the answer to this question five marks that's behind the value of t okay that's fine now for part b Okay, now for part B, it says without doing any further calculations, sketch a velocity time graph for the motion of the rocket from when it was fired. Now please make sure you read the question. To when it returns to A. So it's not just a velocity time graph for what's shown here, also for its return back to the point A, which is where it started from. So what we calculated in the first is only up to the top of its flight. We have to draw the velocity time graph for when it goes up and then when it comes down again. So it's very important that you read these questions carefully, all right? Because I think many people might have just done the journey for when it started to when it reached the top of the flight because that's what we calculated for. So we have velocity. And because it's going to change direction, the velocity is also going to have a negative part. Okay, because velocity is also um, in terms of direction. So velocity meters per second, time in seconds. Now it starts off with an acceleration of 2.8 meters per second squared, which is a positive gradient. And it's quite shallow compared to the gradient of the acceleration due to gravity, which will be negative, but it will be quite steep compared to this. This is like nine, this is negative 9.8 basically. All right, it's going to be negative 9.8. This is positive 2.8. So this is going to be quite a shallow uh, rise. Okay, the first part of the journey, all right, until it reaches its highest speed, its highest velocity, and the highest velocity was the velocity at the top of the flight, which is at the top of the uh, not the top of the flight when it reached um, its highest velocity as it was accelerating up just before the fuel ran out. So that's fourteen point seven. Let me just move this a bit. That's fourteen point seven meters per second. All right, and then it accelerates. Um, due to gravity. So it, first of all, it slows down. All right, this is going to be steeper until it comes to rest. The point where it comes to rest is T, which we worked out was 6.75 seconds. Okay, but then what happens is, that's if it was, if the question just said, draw a code, you know, up to uh, draw a velocity time graph for what we calculated in this question until it reached the top of its flight. Okay, and many people who don't read questions properly, uh, would have just drawn up to this point. However, it says to when it returns to A. So then we've got to also draw on this the part of the graph where it's continuing to, uh, to decelerate. So it's got a negative gradient. The velocity is now negative after it reached its top of its flight. It's now negative and it's heading back to the ground. Okay, they didn't tell us to work out the value of when it you know hits the ground the time when it when when it hit, hits back to the ground again all right so that's perfectly fine to leave your answer like this if you want to you can put here 5.25 that's where it reached reached its highest velocity before the fuel ran out so that's what they're looking for for the sketch 
of the velocity time graph. Okay, if it said speed time graph, then you would then have this kind of bouncing up back here. So the, the, the speed would increase after it's become zero, it would then increase. Speed doesn't consider the direction, so it will just be uh, you know positive. All right, but velocity considers the direction, so the velocity here is negative in this part. Okay, so there's the answer to part B of this question. I hope that was clear. Uh, thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular topic um, will be found in this playlist over here on kinematics and SUVAT and also uh, uh, travel graphs. I'll put, uh, I'm going to make a new playlist for just for graphs, for travel graphs, and it will be over there. You can also find other questions from this paper in the playlist that should appear somewhere in this region. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link over here. Thank you for watching and uh, see you soon. And don't forget the description box. You might find something useful in the description box. The link's there.